Hey, Neo, can we talk about your new fursona? Susan? What's wrong with Susan? Well, I don't think she's very well thought out. I mean, her design is all over the place and really has no direction. Oh, this gives me an idea. We can make a video out of this. We can explain how to make a fursona. Since we, you know, we haven't posted in forever. What do you think, Susan? <laughs> Hi Survivor, it's your favorite Undead Boy Sunday, here to celebrate us reaching our first thousand subscribers. We are truly flattered that so many of you enjoy what we do. So to honor that, we've decided to cover one of our favorite topics in death, how to make a fursona. This is one that's going to be a little longer than usual. We put considerable effort into trying to explain this as thoroughly as possible. So sit back, relax, and let's bite into that. Before we start, we want to clarify something. If you're just making a character for your enjoyment and no one else's, then don't feel pressured to follow what we're going to say. If you're wanting a character that will convey your expression in ways that others enjoy, however, then we're here to teach you some things to consider when doing just that. Both of us have considerable experience making characters. So while we aren't perfect, we have a pretty good system we want to share. To better explain the process, we decided to make a character from scratch and are going to demonstrate what we're talking about as we go along. It kind of ended up being its own custom species, so if you'd like to make it your own, feel free. We don't believe in closed species to be honest, not a big fan of artificially limiting the creativity of the art community, even if it's just by a little bit. Anyways, time to start! So a lot of people like to start out with a species, but hold on, there are some steps before this we should consider. Things that would have a much bigger impact on the character's design than what race it is. I know that's in direct contradiction to what other tutorials on the subject will tell you, but in true Separate Sunday fashion, we pride ourselves on doing things differently. So instead, we're going to start with the character's purpose. You may be asking, well it's my fursona, its purpose is to represent me, but you should be thinking about it more. For example, is a character going to be something you have animated? Then you're going to want a species slash design that's simpler and probably symmetrical so you can reuse the frames from the right side of the character while animating the left. Is it going to be the face of your brand? Use a species slash design that appeals to your target audience and accurately reflects your brand's ideas. Is it being made for writing? Then you should consider a design that you have a large vocabulary to describe, because you may have a better time describing a cat rather than say, a centipede. The next thing we're going to have to give our character is a flaw. Now a character can have more than one flaw, but usually there's one that dictates the character more than others. It's one that a lot of the character's actions in life center around. It not only gives us something that makes the character more relatable, but also gives a challenge for our character to overcome. These changes that the character undergoes to rise above their flaw will shape a lot of the design. So that's why we're going to do it first. The flaws can be physical, like a disability, mental, like an addiction, or artificial, like poverty. For this character, we decided to go on a physical trait. Remember, when using things that are flaws, it's important not to paint the communities living with them in a negative or inaccurate light. Also, please do not fetishize or glorify other people's struggles. Having schizophrenia or trauma isn't cool or deep. It's debilitating and often leads to suicide. If you're worried about doing any of this, then reach out to some people online that are open about having the issue you're using. Ask them how it impacts them, how it's changed their worldview, and how they've overcome the challenges associated with the flaw. Afterwards, show them your idea and see how they can help with it. After all, they have more experience in the subject than you, and your character will be a lot more realistic and accurate thanks to them. And also, don't pander, just don't. For our character, we chose blindness. There are many types of blindness out there, and depending where the issue exists in the ocular process, it can dictate a lot about it. For example, some types of blind people can look at a sad face and have an empathy response, even though they have no idea what they're looking at. But that's for a future video. In this case, we chose total blindness from birth. This allows us to sidestep the initial trauma of becoming blind and focus on the reality of blind living. Now it's more than likely you yourself are not totally blind. But I believe this trait is relatable because we all have some physical limitation. Some are shorter than they wish to be, some are larger than they wish to be, some feel they are too young, others feel they are too old. It's something that the general populace can relate to, and if we can get people to relate to a character, that's one step closer to getting them to love it. Now for the setting. To us, setting includes place, time, other characters, flora, and fauna. 
Time will usually determine what level of technology is available, so we chose a medieval setting for a more primitive concept. Now, what kind of environment would evolutionarily benefit a blind creature? First thing that comes to mind is caves, but let's not limit ourselves here. The environment itself is like a character. In our fictional universe, it can be whatever we wish it to be. Much like circles, we're going to create our own planet that benefits this creature. So we took a concept from a popular horror movie, 30 Days a Night. What if the creature lived in a world with an extremely long day-night cycle? Day and night taking the place of seasons like summer and winter. We can make it to where this creature hibernates underground during extremely hot day times and comes out during the extremely cold night times. Remember, we should also consider flora and fauna as part of the creative process as well. We decided on large plants to open up during the day to provide shade for the creatures below and clothes to protect themselves during the harsh cold of the night, like giant flowers or ferns. Now with your character, you may not be wanting to come up with an original species. You may want to use a species that already exists, and that's totally fine. In that environment, what you're going to want is technology or items of which the character can utilize to overcome their flaw rather than evolutionarily beneficial. Now let's shape our character using our flaw and our setting. If you chose a physical flaw, this is where it's going to have the most impact. There's something we should consider first and foremost, and that's expectation and subversion. What we mean by that is, is our character's design going to match its nature or subvert it? An example of a character meeting expectation is like a scientist in a lab coat. An example of subversion would be a killer dressed as a monk or a nun. In this case, we want to meet the expectation, and the temperament we chose is a mild and kind one, so a lot of our design is going to reflect that. Another thing we should consider is how the character is going to survive in the world. Staying warm, hydrated, and fed are important things to put into design. Let's start with giving them thick fur. This matches well with our cold environment, and also the soft plush factor lends itself to the nature of the character. We also went with a soft, cool tone of the fur. We chose this because it, one, allows them to blend in with their environment, and two, since they're blind, extreme coloration for mating like birds would have doesn't quite make sense. And three, color theory of cold tones lends itself to a character with a chill attitude. Let's explain that last part in a little more detail. So what is color theory? We'll be making a longer explanation in a future video, but for this one, basics are certain colors are instinctively associated with certain moods, like blue with cold, chill, and red with hot and passionate. Now, another trait we added was the character is a bit chubby. This will help insulate the character against the cold. Now that they aren't going to freeze to death, how about food? Well, there are four options, carnivore, omnivore, herbivore, or photosynthesis. Keeping in mind that the character being kind and wanting us to match it, we decided to go with a diet consisting of bugs and berries, a lot of the Timon and Pumbaa style from The Lion King. So how are they going to get this food? Since the character has little technology and is also kind of nomadic, they can't exactly go through a drive through So we gave them long claws to dig into the plants and ground to get to the bugs. Since the ground is cold and hard, and the plants are likely huge and tough as well, they'd have to be rather large and sturdy. So that's exactly what we did. And then the last essential is water. Frozen lakes don't exactly make for the best water source, and eating snow actually takes more hydration to process than it actually gives you. Well, we have the claws to get through the ice, but making a hole big enough for them to put their head through or get their hand in to cup water out would be rather difficult. So we walked it with a small trunk, use it like an elephant to get in the hole and get out the water. Okay, we've covered the basics, but we can do better than basic. Since this is a higher thinking organism, you know, because it's a fursona, a trademark of such organisms is tool use. Locally sourced clothing and accessories would give our creature the advantage it needs to succeed against its competitors. And for that, we figured that the clothing wouldn't serve a purpose to keep the character warm. It already has that with the fur and the fat, so it would more likely exist to keep snow from sticking to the fur and to carry things. So we designed a poncho-like thing with a basket on the back, woven from fibers of the local plants, styling. And how about a weapon? But wait, our creature only eats bugs and berries, and they surely aren't the fighting type. Well, let's think about our character so far. What would help a creature hunt bugs that can be made locally and works for a sightless being? The answer is, we made the lyre flute. Named after the lyre bird, which is a bird that can mimic sounds of other creatures, our flute can mimic the songs of the bugs. A sound that not only helps with their echolocation, but also helps them easily locate hidden bugs when the bugs respond to the noise. Also, let's consider how our creature travels in such a harsh environment. We, after all, made it rather bulky, 
So to allow them to better move on ice, we decided to take their weight and better distribute it over a large surface area with large paws and a tail, as well as make the character slightly smaller by scale. The character won't be outrunning any rabbits anytime soon, but it should help it a bit with not falling through the lake and becoming a fursona sigil. Now let's take a step back and see what we've got. There's a question that a lot of creators tend to forget with their character. That is, anatomically speaking, could this character function? Also consider feature art you want. Could this character pull off a dynamic pose? Could its head even turn without obstruction to its vision? Now that we've finished all the physical aspects of the species itself, it's personality time. If you chose a mental flaw, this is where it'll have the most impact. Now some of you may want to reflect yourself into the character, or make someone entirely unlike you. Either is fine, but remember we still want the character to be relatable. So let's start with likes and dislikes. Likes will often have corresponding dislikes, so I like to make a list of the likes first and then dislikes seconds, but feel free to do it the other way around. The character we build definitely likes food, since a lot of its design incorporates the acquisition of it. It also likes nature, since the world we made is very naturalistic. And since it's so sound reliant, it probably likes music. The corresponding dislikes are starvation, environmental destruction, and silence. Now all that's left is to give it a name. You can name the character pretty much anything you want within reason, so we went with Gertrude, and the species name Snow Elephant. So there we go, our lovely calm Gertrude, whose heart and soft music resonates warmth as it echoes throughout the cold quiet forest night. Protector of nature, keeper of wisdom, and most importantly, grandmother to all who cross her path. A small candle in a very dark room. Anyway, Survivor, thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you out a little. If it did, leave a comment down below. Also, make sure to subscribe so you can catch our next videos. We love you all, so remember to be safe, or you may end up like me.